What's up, Fight fans? Thank you, as always, for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. Loads more content coming. I've got so many ideas in terms of where to take the channel, in terms of content. Even, even, I'm actually thinking of um, doing it from a proper studio. Uh, not a proper, proper studio, but something where the background's consistent. Just trying to improve the channel. I've got some ideas, I don't know. It would all cost a bit of money, but... I love doing it, so why not, right? All right, let's talk Derek Chisora again. Derek Chisora fights, obviously, Dylan White, December 22nd, so that's, what, three or four days' time. Pay-per-view, O2 Arena. I think I think it's close to selling out right now. I think 18,000 or so tickets have been sold, so he's doing well. And I put a tweet out about this, or specifically about Derek Chisora, and I mentioned, um, I think, the word perseverance, like, and I think I put it in capital letters. Yeah, I did. I put it in capital letters, perseverance. Derek Chisora has eight losses. Eight losses on the resume. What's he? He's lost to Tyson Fury twice, David Hay, Vitaly Klitschko, Dillian White, Hellenius, Caballel, and Pulev. Um, eight losses. Pff, unbelievable. Um, of those eight, he beat Hellenius for me, and I think you could have given the fight against Dillian White. But nonetheless, he's lost eight times. He's been Knocked out or stopped twice. David Hay obviously knocked him out in that fight at Upton Park. And Tyson Fury beat him up badly. Badly at... Where was it? I think it was Wembley Arena. I think it was Wembley Arena. I was actually there. That was the um, main event. Um, the undercard was Billy Joe Saunders versus Chris Eubank Jr. So he's lost eight times. And six months ago, David Hay offered him... 60,000, I think he upped it to 80,000 to fight Joe Joyce. That was six months ago. In four days' time, he fights for upwards of 1.5 million pounds. Six months ago. <laughs> was it six months ago, seven months ago, whatever? He was offered, you guys all saw it, you guys remember it, ringside, Joe Joyce, David Hay, he was offered 60,000 to fight Joe Joyce. And in a few days' time, he headlines a pay-per-view card at the O2 Arena. In fact, I'll even take it further. There's a promoter over here. Uh, I'm not going to mention his name. Um, obviously, Chisora is from Zimbabwe. And that promoter put shows on in Zimbabwe. They're, they're big-ish shows, but there's a, a local sort of heavyweight here called Elvis Moyo. <clears throat> he's lost. I don't know how many times he's lost. I think he's lost like five times. I think he's won eight or nine. And they were so keen on making Chisora versus Elvis Moyo. They were going to offer Chisora, I think, again, about £50,000. But it was a big thing, right? They thought that if Chisora can come over to Zimbabwe, it would boost the economy. It'd be a massive fight in a stadium. Talking like 30,000, 40,000 people would be there. And they thought that they could actually do it. They thought they could pull this off. They thought, especially after the Caballero loss, they thought they could get Chisora maybe for cheap, 50, 60 grand. Almost like what David Hay did when David Hay thought he could get Chisora on the cheap as well. Almost trying to make a name for Joe Joyce on the back of Derek Chisora. I'm not quite sure how Derek Chisora has been able to do it, but win or lose, Derek Chisora has been able to stay relevant for the last seven years. I thought Derek Chisora was completely done after the Tyson Fury loss. And for some reason, three or four losses later, he's still here, still fighting for big money, and you've just got to applaud the perseverance. You've got to applaud a guy that has lost eight times but still finds a way to stay relevant in what is becoming one of the richest divisions, if not the richest division in boxing. To still stay relevant in this division with eight losses on your resume is, is unbelievable. When you look at a division, and look at the division, think of the top 10 in your head of the heavyweight division. And I think aside from Povetkin and who else has got a couple of losses? Joseph Parker. Everyone else is either undefeated or has only one loss. Derek Chisora is relevant amongst those with eight losses. It's unbelievable. Um, you guys know I'm a big fan of his. I'll tell you a very quick story before I go. Um, when, and most of you might know the story anyway, but I, I've given him so much credit over the years and it's difficult for me to even criticise him when he loses because I remember when me and Ryan were starting out box talk, literally... We were nobodies, right? Absolutely nobodies. I think we had like 100 subscribers. Um, we had um, a camera with no mic, nothing about us. And I remember I emailed Don Charles. This was in 
preparation for Derek Chisora's fight against Tyson Fury. Remember, it got called off twice that fight. I don't know if you guys remember. But so this was, although I can't remember when the fight was, this was about eight months before the fight actually happened. And Don Charles said, you know what? Come to the camp. So we went, me and Ryan, very giggly and excited, went to um, Finchley where he was training and he was sparring. And Don, I remember telling us to like turn the cameras off, uh, which was fair. We were just excited to be there. And I remember he was actually sparring and I interviewed him after. He was sparring Daniel Dubois, right? And Daniel Dubois was uber young at the time, but very big. And everyone was talking about this guy potentially being something special. So Daniel Dubois was in the camp. I think Ian Lewison was there as well. I can't remember, but I remember Don Charles being so open to us like asking like we could ask anything we wanted to and i remember derek chisora finished sparring and coming down ringside and just having i don't know a conversation like you would have with your friends about boxing about what we should do and um, how we should try and get interviews this that this that and i remember me and ryan leaving thinking wow like just wow like we, we were nobodies we were nobodies not that we're somebody now but we were nobodies and this guy gave us the time of day. And trust me, we reached out to a number of boxes, a number of training camps, even when we started to get a bit big and got rejected, rejected, rejected about coming down and just doing stuff. Not um, stuff whereby there's a fight on and, and um, you know, everyone can come down. I mean, just coming down one on one personally. And we got rejected. And Don Charles and Derek Chisora accepted us. So, look, I think he's that amazing. I wish him good luck. Um, as someone that, um, I'm fond of, I, I hope he wins and I hope that this story can continue. But even if he doesn't win, I think fans will still look back at someone like Derek Chisora in years to come and think a lot of boxers talk about stuff like, I will fight anyone. Derek Chisora is one of those people and maybe even Dylan White that I genuinely believe would fight anyone because his resume, win or lose, says that's true.